Yo friends, what's up? Do you need a quick way to set up things like Tailwind, internationalization, authentication and so on, then the Svelte CLI is for you. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use the Svelte CLI to create a Svelte project and add all of these integrations that I mentioned. Alright, but before we get started, here's a message from our sponsor. I'd like to thank this video sponsor, you, the viewer. You can support the channel through Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Members get early access to videos, help shape the content and a special Discord role. You can find all of the links in the description. Thank you for your support. Alright friends, here is a short and sweet blog post introducing the new Swell CLI. Basically the Swell team released a new CLI for creating, enhancing and upgrading Swell projects named SV. In the past you would use something like npm create Swell to create a new Swell project now you say npx sv create and that's it. And it also has some cool features that we're going to talk about. Alright, if you want to read more, I'm going to leave all of the links in the description. But basically we can go to the docs. So here we have docs, you have Svelte, Svelkit and the CLI docs. So you have everything under one umbrella. And you can see it's very simple if you look at the usage. So you can just say npx sv, we can pass a command and the arguments. And here are the commands you can give it. So for example, you can use sv create to create a new project. You can even pass it flags like the template if you want TypeScript or JS doc. No types, no add-ons and no install if you want to skip the dependency installation which you're going to look at in a second. And then if you want to add another integration later you can use SV add and then you can pick from one of the official integrations. And I think later they're even going to include community integrations. The community members are going to be able to create their own templates which can be just easily added. And then we have other commands like SV check so you can find errors and warning in your project such as unused CSS, accessibility hints, JavaScript and TypeScript compilation errors. And here is another useful one for migration, SV migrate. And you have a bunch of options here if you want to migrate to Svelte 2, Svelte 4 migration script and Svelte 5 migration script. And all of these options have a great migration guide that you can read if you need to do that. And the last thing I want to point is the GitHub repo for the Svelte CLI. So if you have any issues, want to contribute to it, I'm going to post all of the links in the description. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's look at the new Svelte CLI. Alright, here I am inside VS Code. Let's say for example that you want to scaffold a new Svelte project. Well, first you can say npx or you can use the package manager of your choice. And to see all of the options, you can just say sv. Alright, so we can see the commands we have create, add, migrate, check and help. You don't even have to use the docs since you have the power of the terminal at your fingertips. For example, maybe you're interested in what you can do with create. Well, you can just say npx sv create and then you can use dash dash help. And this should give you all of the options. And now from here you can see that it's going to ask you about the path. And then you have some other extra options like supplying the template. If you want types or not, add-ons. And if you want to skip installing dependencies. So if you're automating this using some script or whatever you're doing right, you can just pass these flags to the setup. But I'm just going to press Ctrl L so I clear everything and then I'm going to say npx sv create. Alright, so now it's going to ask you where you want this to be created and I'm just going to press enter since I'm already inside of an empty folder. Now it asks you about which template you want. Of course in most situations you're going to want the minimal template unless you want to explore what Svelte and Svelkit can do, right? And this is another awesome option if you're working on a library. And even though this says Svelte library, this is really awesome for working on any JavaScript library. Because now the lib folder becomes the entry point of your app and you can use routes for documentation or for testing out your library. But in my case, I'm just going to pick the minimal example. And here you can pick between using TypeScript or JavaScript with JS doc comments, whichever you prefer. Of course, I'm going to pick TypeScript. And now we can pick between one of these options. Alright, so the option that we have here is Prettier, ESLint, Vtest, Playwright, Tailwind CSS, Drizzle, Lucia, MDSVX, Paraglide and Storybook. I'm not going to assume that you know this thing, so let's actually look at what these integrations are. So basically Prettier is just a thing for formatting your code, that's basically the simplest explanation. Then you have ESLint, this can check your code for potential problems. And then for testing you have things like Vtest, so you can do unit tests to test some specific logic if you need something more complicated, for example you want to test a checkout progress, you need a browser to do that, then you can use Playwright. So this is often referred to end-to-end -end testing. Then of course, everyone should know what Tailwind CSS is, right? Basically, if you want Tailwind, which is really popular, that's why it's included. Alright, so if you're looking into an ORM for a database so it's easier to work with it, you can use something like Drizzle. And if you need all, there's Lucia. And of course, there's some recent discussions about Lucia no longer being a library, and that's fine because the off in Svelkit on Lucia is based on their guidelines. So basically, Lucia is moving from being a library to just a guideline on how to implement off. And of course, if you need Markdown in Svelte, like you have MDX in React, for example, you can use MDSVEX, which is really great. 
Alright, so here is another awesome one. Maybe you need internationalization. For this, you can use Paraglide. And if you want to test your components using a nice UI, you can use Storybook. So this is used for component testing. Most people should know what this is already. So this is something that you need, then you can use this. But yeah, basically, those are all of the integrations that we have. Alright, so in this case, I'm actually going to go with Prettier, ESLint, let's ignore testing, maybe I want Tailwind CSS, Drizzle for the database, and Lucia for authentication. Alright, now that I'm done, I can press enter, and then I'm going to get prompted with more questions. So for example, since I picked Tailwind CSS, now it asks me, hey, do you want some plugins for Tailwind? Sure, the typography plugin is really nice, let's pick the plugin for forms, and that's basically it, now I can press enter. Alright, so for Drizzle, it asks me which database would I like to use. I'm a fan of SQLite. Alright, so we can pick Squeal, and then we can pick which Squeal client we want. And I really don't care, I'm just going to pick libsql. Alright, and since we pick Lucia, it's asking us if we want a demo. And I'm going to say yes, and this is really great, for example, maybe you can learn how to integrate off using cookies with something like Lucia, right? This is going to give you a really nice window into that. So let's just say yes. And now it's going to ask you which package manager do you want to install dependencies with. You can say none, or you can use the package manager of your choice. In my case, I prefer PNPM. So let's do that. And now this should take a minute, and that's going to be it. Alright, so now that this is done, it even shows you the additional steps that you can take. So for Drizzle, you will need to set the database URL in your production environment, and it's fine, you don't have to do this. And it also tells you to run PNPM run DB push to update your database schema. And we also have to do this for Lucia. Alright, so let's actually do that, and I can just say pnpm, we don't have to say run with pnpm, so I can just say db push, and this is going to create a database and the schema. Okay, this is going to ask you if you want to run these statements, let's just say yes, and this is already created the database, as we can see here in the sidebar, and now it's going to do all of its magic, right? And now it should be done. Okay, so now that I cleared everything, let me show you something cool, let me just open a new terminal, I'm going to say pnpm dev, so this is going to run the development server, and now we can also run the Drizzle Studio. So this is like Prisma Studio. It's really awesome. A nice GUI which you can use to look at your database. All right, so now I can say pmpm db studio. And of course, you should not make a typo. Let's just say npm studio. All right, so now this runs at local.drizzle.studio. And if you're wondering where am I pulling these things out of my head, right? You can just go to package JSON. And now you can see all of this is here, right? So you have db push db migrate, db studio, and so on. So it's not like I made it up, right? And let's actually see if this works. All right, so let me actually close these tabs, and we can go to localhost 5173. So this is our development server. And sorry for the flashbang, this is just default tailwind out of the box. But for example, if I just enlarge this, and let's go to demo, Lucia, now we can see here we have just a simple login. Of course, we have no style since we're using tailwind, so everything is reset. And what was the URL again? Let's actually open it up. So it's local.drizzle.studio. So open that. And since I'm in Brave, I have to disable the shield. So this works. Now you can see this is a nice GUI for your database. All right, so you can actually look a bit how this works, right? So it's careful that all of these things which you can explore on your own, right? Here you have source. So this is where everything was created inside lib. You have this server folder. So these files can only be imported on the server, which is a nice SwellKit feature. So here we have the database. So this is the Drizzle setup. You have the schema here for Drizzle. So you can look at this if you're interested in. Here you have the off setup. So this is using Lucia for off. Well, most of these helper functions from these libraries are around and it's using cookies for the sessions, right? You can even go into hooks.server.ts if you want to learn more how this is handled. I even have an entire video on how to implement off using cookies from scratch if you want to watch that. But yeah, basically that's it, right? They're not exploiting anything from here. Here we can see these routes where we have this demo, right? Here is the Lucia demo. This is just a login folder, nothing special. We can actually just look at what is inside. Here's generating the user ID, sessions, and so on. You can actually explore this if you want, and it should have probably some actions inside of here. Okay, we can even see there are some functions for validating the password. It has to be a string, it has to be a certain length, and etc. So keep that in mind. But yeah, let me actually see if I go to the top. Yeah, these are the actions, right? Yeah, actions, there's supporting actions for form actions, if you know about that and SwellKit, right? Basically, this is just the form then, so this action goes to login, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And let's see, what is this? Oh, uh, this is also the load. Yeah, cool. All of these things are really nicely included for you here.
Here you can even sign out when you log in, and that's basically it. Let's see, this is the demo page for Lucia. Here you have this layout, here you're just importing some global styles, and that's basically it. And this is our home page. Alright, so we can actually try it out, and we can go here. Let's just say test, and I'm going to give it a super secret long password. Let's see if we can register a user. Awesome. It gives us our user ID, and we can sign out. And now we can look in Drizzle Studio. If we refresh, okay, it should be updated. Awesome. So now we have the ID, user ID, and etc. And this is really lovely. So now we can sign out if we want. That's basically it. So let's see if we can log back in. Let's log in. Boom. Everything works. So this is how easy and simple it is to get started with the Svelte CLI. All right, let's say that we want to add another integration like MD Swex for Markdown. Well, first, let me close all of these things. And you can even say pointy boy collapse, just so everything is neat and tidy. We can open our terminal back here. And now we can just press Ctrl C to kill everything. And now instead of saying npx sv create, we can use npx sv add. So to add MD Swex, for example, all we have to do is say npx as we add MD Swex. That's basically it. Let's say enter. And we can say yes to using pnpm. All right, with that out of the way, let's start the development server back again. All right, so let's look at the Svelte config file. So here we can see it's imported MD Swex, and here it added this .svx extension. All right, so now margin files or .svx files are going to be treated as Svelte components. But of course, you can use any extension that you want. So for example, we can actually go to source, routes, let's create a new file, markdown page.svx. Now we're going to see it even has this special icon, and now we can say hello or something. All right, so now we can go back here to our page, and instead of going to demo, we can just go to the markdown route. And we're going to see we have hello here, we can even inspect it, we can see the markdown has been turned to HTML. All right, and that's basically it. So this is the new Swell CLI. If you like what you're seeing, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.